you want to turn the other cheek. Yeah, that turned the other cheek to somebody like own people. In fact, that's who we're back to. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. Yeah, there you should be sold to your enemies. He says you're going to go back into Egypt again with ships. Now when you look on your dollar bill, on the back of the dollar bill, what do you got? You got a pyramid. You go to the you go to Washington D.C. You got the Washington Monument. That's that's the Oberlin from Egypt. So uh, so this whole place is it has a familiar to it. You go to Vegas, you got the pyramids. You go to Memphis, they got a, a pyramid over there in Memphis. And Memphis was a, was also a name of an old Egyptian city. So we're back in Egypt all over again. But he said this time we're going to go by Egypt on ships. Now if you know anything about this the Israel and where Egypt is. They're within walking distance. That's right. We we walked to Egypt. Right. We walked to Israel from Egypt. Right. Right. So how in the world are we gonna go on go to Egypt on ships? Is yeah, it's that close. It's a it's a walking distance. So when he says we're gonna go into Egypt again on ships, that means we're gonna go into slavery. In fact, hold uh, give me Exodus twenty. Now, now it's, going, it's going to let me define what Egypt is in the scriptures. This is Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. <clears throat> and Yahweh spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Right. Yeah, so Egypt, Egypt in the scriptures spiritually also means the house of bondage. Are we not in bondage as a people? We're, we're in bondage. We, we are under the control of this man. There's nothing you can you can say or do. He, he, he has us in his hand. And that's the reason why he's got certain judges coming to him, because it was already prophesied he was going to do this. This same nation, the so-called white man, who's also known as the Edomites in the Bible, it was prophesied that they would do this to us. Thousands of years ago, we talking about three thousands upon thousands of years ago, that they were going to do this to us. So there's a judgment, and, and it, it goes in the scriptures, our power is not going to forgive us. So he's, he's not the enemy that you're supposed to forgive according to the scriptures. Give me uh, Malachi chapter uh, 1, starting at the top. So that enemy, this this guy, uh, the so-called white man, his name is the, their, their, the biblical nationality is the Edomites, which they are actually, um, came uh, uh, their the wicked twin brother of Jacob, which is our forefather. And it was prophesied that they would actually be our enemy in the last days. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, said the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Said the Lord, yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau. Yeah, so this right here, our people are always asking. Like the, there was a guy that came on Saturday. He said, well, if you're telling us that we're the Israelites and that this is our God, then why are we in the condition we're in? How does it show that he loves us? That's what our people ask all the time. But read, read, uh, read that top, go start from the top again. God. I have loved you, saith the Lord. He said he's loved us. He says he's loved us. Why? Because we, he chose us as his people. He chose us as his only people on the planet. God. We are known as, a, we are the only people that have the title as being the children of God. That's all through the scriptures. We're the only people that can have that title. Yah Sharab. Israel means he is the prince of God. He is the prince of the power. That's what Israel means. If you ask any of them so-called Jews, they can't tell you what it right, means. Right, they're going to tell you, oh, he that, you, that, he that struggles with God. That's right. what they're going to tell you. They don't know nothing. Right. We are the real uh, children of the power. What you doing, huh? Yet ye say, 
wherein has thou loved us? Yes, because we look at our condition right now. We're saying, where did, where, where did you love us? When did you love us? That's why it's important that we go back into the history to show us that he does love us and he, and he also wrote into us that he's going to deliver us. That he's going to send his son to deliver us from our captivity. Keep going up. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Said the Lord. Yeah, so, we, we, uh, so Esau was Jacob's brother. Esau is the forefather of the so-called white man. He was born without pigmentation as, as a sign of, of who he is. Because he, he, you know, he, was, he was a fraternal twin. You get what I'm saying? Like me and dad, he was a twin brother, but he didn't look, they, they didn't look alike. They were completely separated from the womb. So that was the, my, this is the, this is what I meant. Okay, so before Esau, Esau was the first white man. Yeah, he was the first white man on the planet. And first, what you know as a white man on the planet, he was the first of his kind. He was the prototype. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was given that mark because it was a sign to the world that this guy is separated from everybody else. And that's why all the nations, for a while, didn't like him, but it was prophesied that he was supposed to rule over the world. He was supposed to rule over the world in the last days, meaning his his descendants, because you because you all who your, your father was. Right. That's why we're known in the Bible as Jacob because we all came from Jacob. Right. That's why in the scriptures they're known as Esau and Edom because they all came from that same person. Because Ibu Asha, he wasted away. Yeah. Right. Wasted away because he had no pigmentation, and even if they and and, and they kept that mark on them, that sign of them having that up until now. And now we're able to identify him in the scriptures. No? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so keep, keep going down and up. What's that Esau Jacob's brother said the Lord? Yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, saying, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Yeah, so this is the time when the, the Edomites, they weren't ruling for, the, you know, the whole Middle Ages? That was our, our people ruling. Because that was the time for him, for the so-called white men to live in the caves. That's why they're known as the Caucasians. Right. Because they were living in the Caucasus Mountains during that time. The Israelites rose up during the time of the Ro Roman Empire and pushed them into the Caucasus Mountains. So they were living in the Caucasus Mountains for like about a thousand years and then they came back during the Renaissance period. That's why it's called the Renaissance. You know what Renaissance means? Renaissance means rebirth. So that means that they were dead at one point. They were living in a dead state, meaning that they weren't in rulership. That's why when the so-called white man took over after the Middle Ages, he called it the Renaissance period because it was a rebirth of his rule. So ever since then, what he's been doing is he's been messing all people up, putting them into slavery genocide poisoning our people and then taking over the four corners of the earth which was prophesied that he was going to do in the last days. You know? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, Woo! and the people against whom the Lord hath in the nation forever. Yeah, so the, so the Mosai is going to hate them forever. That's what he said. We didn't write that. He said he's going to hate them forever. Because why? What he, what he touched, he touched the apple of his eye. So why is there so many, I mean, the Bible is the Bible. Why is there so many spins? How many what? God so loved the world, so he loved everybody. Why is there so many spins? We, we can go into that. We, we can right. go into that. We'll go, we'll go into that. In fact, go ahead and get me that, uh, that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That God so loved the world because you hear that in the churches a lot. Right? That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, it's plain when he say Jacob he loved Esau, he hated. Yeah. You understand me? So that clearly that he hates. He hates so the, he my hates my hates right. Yeah. So my thing is why is there so many things? You know, Old Testament, New Testament. God so loved the world, so he loved everybody, and everybody can get a taste of basically. Basically, 
we'll, 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 get, we'll get to that. Now, for the word world, how many, do you know how many definitions, there's a lot of, is, is there one definition for the word world? I actually, I've seen one cap in um, um, a group of people. Uh, hey, I'll give you a question, I'll ask you a question, how old are you? I'm 35. You ever watch ABC? On Saturday, you used to have the, uh, the uh, wide world of sports? Yeah, right. You, you're, you know what I'm talking about? Wrestling. No, uh, on ABC on Saturdays, you used to have the wide world of sports. You ever heard about the sports world, the Arab world? Uh, Insect world, world. world, music world. <laughs> I, I, nah. The world of music. They got to about the world of music. Nah. The word world is the, the, the word world is, is referring to a particular group of people. Go ahead and get me uh, that uh, John three. This is Saint John, <clears throat> chapter three. Verse 15, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, earlier we told you, who was this Bible written to? The Israelites, right? So, when he says he sent his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth on him shall not perish is talking about Israelites. And we're going to give you that because what 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 is according to the Bible, if you believe in who the world knows as Jesus, whose real name is Yahusha, what do you get? You get what? Say it again. Go ahead and give me Isaiah 45 and 17. This is Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Say that again. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. No, the so-called white man, Esau. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. The Arabs, Ishmael. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. The Canaanites. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. So who's going to be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation? Israel. Let's keep going on. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. So, you see that? The scriptures is, is showing you who everlasting salvation is for. But see, in these churches, they're not going to teach you that. Everlasting salvation is only for the Israelites. It's not for any other nation. God. We're the ones that need salvation. These other nations, they're good. Our people are destroyed throughout the four corners of the earth. Wherever they are, they're at the, they're at the bottom. God. So we need everlasting salvation. That's the reason why he died, because he had to die for, for our sins. Because our sins is the reason why we're under the curses. Us breaking the laws. Right. So he had to die and, 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 and take on the punishment of our sin, which is death, which is eternal separation from our power and, and to close and to bridge that back so that way we can be reconciled back to him. Hey, no pictures, man. And then uh, and, 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 and then we got uh, the, the new the new testament, right? You're the new testament for everybody, right? Anybody can believe. That's what I'm saying. Now Israel's supposed to be the spirit, we're supposed to be spiritual. See? Okay, yeah. we'll get into that. So we'll see who the new who the new covenant is for, right? Go ahead and get me Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Huh? We just said because it's just, you know, it's just not uh, something that we want. If they want to, if they want to catch it, they can catch us. If they want to come out and find out how to find us, they can you know, do it on the news. But anybody who's taking pictures, they could be. You know what I'm saying? How can you join your camp? Right. Go, go to the zoo. Go to the zoo if you want to take pictures. Yeah. Like, it's like a serious video. Yeah. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. How you join your camp? I look like coming. You got, you got to count the calls and you keep coming out. You know, we're, we're here every Saturday at, by 2 o'clock. We're out. Every Saturday at, at this at this spot right here at 2 o'clock. So you got to, you got to be this. You got to, you know, this is a serious thing. What we're doing right here is, is truly life or death. This is like a mafia. And we got, and, and, our, and our power is the Godfather. Like he will, you know, and, and so once you get into this thing, it's blood in, blood out. The only way you're going to get out of this, if you're in this thing, is you got to either be delivered or you got to die. That's it. 